house of the Lord today, when I'm saying all, I mean all. Amen. All of you in the house of God. I hope uh, we will just take this uh, last hour that we have to uh, be patient with the minister uh, and get as much as we can of the word of God. I'm sure you've got your Bibles ready. You got your notebooks ready. You got your heads and your hearts ready to receive uh, the word of God. Mm. And I trust and believe God is about to use me to speak to you. Mm. He, at one time, he used a donkey to speak to a prophet. Mm -hmm. The other time, he used a raven to speak and serve a prophet. I'm sure he can use me to. He used a baby in the name of Samuel uh, to speak to senior prophet Eli. And the word was from God. Mm -hmm. So I believe today, no matter who I am, no matter what I am, no matter my limitations, I believe God can still use somebody Amen. to speak to Amen. Uh, We've had uh, really good messages uh, from different people. Uh, especially 2 Corinthians chapter 4. That's my one of my favorite chapters. Mm -hmm. uh, that's one of my favorite chapters. The other favorite chapter is Romans chapter 6. Uh, you know, you, you just have favorite chapters here and there. Yeah. Uh, Psalms 91 is one of my favorite okay. as well. You just go on and have favorite chapters. There are some places where a verse can bless you, but there are sometimes where the whole chapter can just bless you. Uh, so if you're in the business of highlighting uh, verses in the Bible, you'll find in my old Bible, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter number 4, everything is just highlighted in there. Mm -hmm. um, meaning it's uh, my favorite chapter. Mm -hmm. uh, the praise and worship service that we've had today is a very good praise and worship service, mm -hmm. similar to what we had last week. You see, uh, there are times when people are in control of services, or people are in control of yeah. things. Yet there are other times where God himself yeah. is in control. Amen. So what we do here is just to create an environment where God can be in control, where somebody can come in and touch God himself. Amen. Uh, in the book of, uh, I believe it's in the book of uh, Hebrews, uh, chapter 9, where it says, We go to before the throne of God with boldness. Mm -hmm. We go before the throne of God with boldness. Boldness. And where do we get boldness? We get boldness that we are children of God, that we have accepted Jesus as our Lord and Savior. And His blood has cleansed us. Of all our sins, that is where we get boldness. Uh, we do not get boldness because we have done something. No, 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 no. There is nothing that we have done uh, that warrants us uh, uh, to be accounted uh, for as righteous. But just our belief in Jesus uh, because of the work that he has done for us. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believes in him uh, will not perish, uh, but have everlasting life. There are situations that can cause you to perish. Uh, there are some uh, circumstances that can cause you uh, to perish. Uh, but if only you believe in God, if only you believe in Jesus, then you will not perish, but have eternal life. This is the boldness that we have. And everybody say, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So be bold when you pray. And be bold when you study the word of God. And be bold when you come to the house of God. You are a child of God. Hallelujah. And whenever you pray, believe you receive. And you shall receive. Now last week, uh, we were talking on uh, Philippians chapter number 4. Philippians chapter number 4. I would like to continue using uh, Philippians chapter number 4 and see what message uh, we can get from it. We can get from it. 
We were talking about uh, godliness with contentment is great gain. Godliness with contentment is great gain. Godliness with contentment is great gain. What are we saying when we are saying godliness with contentment? The first thing is we are godly. The first thing is we are godly. We have come to God. We have come to accept the Lord as our Lord and Savior. Therefore, we are godly. We are living godly lives. We are godly. Jesus is our righteousness. Therefore, we are godly. We are godly. We are children of God. Uh, again, the Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness. Then everything else shall be added unto you. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness. And then everything else will be added unto you. But our problem uh, with our day and our time is people are seeking first the blessings of God, hoping that that will consolidate the righteousness upon them. Yeah. Uh, things are, are standing the wrong way around uh, in our churches today. And most of the men of God are not helping the situation. They are not correcting the situation. They are actually using the blessing of God to attract people to God. Mm -hmm. I, I, I can't remember a time when the greatest preacher on the face of the earth, Jesus Christ, was telling people, come, 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 come. Uh, God will bless you. God will give you more money. God will give you more this. God will give you more this. Come. I cannot remember. I, I, I don't know if I'm missing it here, but I cannot remember a Jesus saying, come, 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 God will give you money, God will give you the material stuff of this world, God will give you all this. No, 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 no. no. Jesus is actually Jesus himself who says, seek ye first the kingdom of God. So we want to consolidate our relationship with our Father God. We want to make sure we've got a relationship with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. This is the reason that brings us to Him. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. I believe in the last few weeks I was talking that uh, we have escaped the corruption of the world that worked through last. And we have been translated to the kingdom of our dear Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I believe that's in Second uh, uh, Peter two verse four. Uh, we have been translated to the kingdom of the dear Son Jesus Christ. Yes. And then, when you are in the kingdom, when you have received Jesus. When you have been baptized in water, when you have been baptized in the Holy Ghost, wait upon the Lord and you will see the Lord adding things to you. Amen. Yeah. But, but we do not come for things. It's so that the things can define our blessing. No, we come for the blessing so that when we are in the blessing, then we are positioned to participate in anything else that comes with our relationship with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So what are we saying? What are we saying? What are you saying, preacher? I am saying when you are in God, when you have received our Lord Jesus as our Lord and Savior, in whatever situation you are, be content. When Jesus is your Lord and um, you, you, you have what you have or you are going through what you are going through, be content. Be content with who you are. With, come with me again to the book of Philippians. Philippians uh, chapter number 4. Let's read it again. 
start with the explanation so that I take you to the scripture and then uh, uh, while we are in the scripture we can get the explanation again from the scripture. Verse number 11. Verse number 11. Philippians 4 verse number 11. Paul here is speaking to people that have received Jesus as their Lord and Savior. He's speaking to people that are already in the church of Jesus Christ in Philippi. He is talking uh, to the uh, saved people of God. Most of them full of the Holy Spirit, baptized in water. They have accepted Jesus. They have said, we accept Jesus. We receive him in our lives. These are the people that Paul is talking to here in Philippians chapter number 4. Verse number 11, know that I speak in respect of want. Know that I, I speak in respect of want. But he says, for I have learned in whatsoever state that I am. desiring gifts or desiring more money or desiring more material stuff. He says, for I have learned, I have learned in whatsoever state I am. It, 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 does the Bible say whatsoever? Can everybody say whatsoever state? Whatsoever state, whatsoever state I am. Whatsoever state. Thank you for your enthusiasm. Paul now is saying, in whatsoever state I am, I have learned to be content. That means in whatsoever state I am, I should be able to praise God. I should be able to worship God. I should be able to feel the power of God. I should be able to study the Bible. I should be able even to smile at the people of God because I am content. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Because I am content, because I am content with whatsoever state that I am. That means, what are you trying to say, preacher? I'm trying to say my attitude does not depend on the things that I have. My attitude to God should not depend on the things that I have. My attitude to the people of God should not depend on the things that I have. But in whatsoever state I am, whatsoever, thank you very much, whatsoever state I am, I have learned to be content. I will show you the benefits of contentment. I will show you the benefits of contentment. And it doesn't mean that when I am content, I am not willing to receive any blessing of God. It doesn't mean that. It doesn't mean that when I am content, uh, God is not going to increase me. He's going to increase you. But wherever you are, be content. Be content. We will show you uh, in a bit the benefits of being content. But in verse number 12, verse number 12, I know both how to be abased and I know how to abound. How to increase. To abound is to increase. To be abased is to be at the lowest strata of any <laughs> economic situation. Lowest strata. He says, I know how to be abased. I've always spoken of situations when we first visited this country, we were abased. I, for one, was dependent on 27 pounds in a, in a week. That is what I had to budget in a week. And every food, every clothing, every, everything had to come from that 27 pound in a week. But that's the time when we started praying in our house. 
That's the time when we reached out for more of God. That's the time when we met people like Sister Justina and we started worshiping God in our house. So it doesn't mean that when we are lacking, we do not see a reason for coming to God. It doesn't mean that when situations change for the worst, that should affect my relationship with God. No, it shouldn't be that. And he says, I know how to abound, how to increase. There are sometimes situations where you find when somebody has increased, their relationship with God drops. Because suddenly they've got everything they've ever longed for. Uh, they've got every paper. I don't know what's wrong with paper. They've got every paper that they've ever wanted. Uh, they've got every job they've ever wanted. Uh, they've got every situation. Uh, things have fallen in place for them. And they do not see any reason to continue with God. But here it says, whether I abound. It says, I know how to abound. Shouldn't be that when I'm abounding, I shouldn't see sense in relating with the people of God. That's when I should relate more with the people of God. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. So in verse number 12 here, I know how to abound. I know how to be abased everywhere. In all things, I am instructed. I believe we are instructing people in the house of God here today. It says, I am instructed. We do not only teach, we instruct. I know we love it when we are talking about our driving instructor. Ah, but not our Bible instructor. Paul says, I am instructed. This is an instruction. That is receiving. The instruction that he received when he came to Christ is Paul. When situations change for the worst, you are a believer in God. When situations change for the best, you are a believer in God. This is my encouragement to somebody today. God will bless you. You will rise more and more, but you are still a believer. Situations may change. Are like the job situation changed. And the wife came to Job and said, Cast God and leave. But when you your situation is changing for the worse, I'm saying, Bless God and leave. Bless God in that situation. Hallelujah. Sing songs, I shall bless the Lord from this time forward, even now and forevermore. Bless God and leave. Instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. May God help us. May God help us. May God help us. You see, I do not want any of, situ any of your situations to change for the worst. I do not want that. But we have no control in life. We, we are not God. Your pastor is not God. We do not want you to go through worse situations, but we are preparing you for any eventuality. If ever life were to change for the worse, may we continue to bless God through it all. Do we sing a song? Through it all. I've learned to trust in Jesus. Through it all. I've learned to trust in God. Through it all. I've learned to depend upon His word. Through it all. What does that song mean that we always sing? What does it mean when we say through it all? It means whether things go for the good or for the worse. I remember in marriage, it says for better, for worse. Isn't it? For better, for worse. So which means that if a marriage can be for better or for worse, that means a relationship with God can also be for better. Are you still with me? Amen. Come with me. Come with me. 
to Jeremiah, hold your finger there, we'll come back to it. We'll come back to it. But come with me to Jeremiah chapter number 45. Jeremiah chapter 45. If you know where Jeremiah is, Isaiah is somewhere afterwards. Uh, if you know where Isaiah is, it's Jeremiah is after Isaiah. Are you there? Seekest thou great things for thyself, and seekest thou great things for thyself. You see, I, I'm, I'm contrasting. I'm contrasting this uh, verse with the verse that says, "Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all His righteousness. Then everything else shall be added unto you." That's what I'm looking at. I, I, I'm contrasting the two. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness and everything else shall be added unto you. I think people are looking for a pen. Someone is looking for a pen. I'm sure we can look for a pen and concentrate at the same time. Mm -hmm. Next time, bring your pen, please. Um, 45, verse number 5. Are we there? Mm -hmm. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness. Is the one we are contrasting it with. And all his righteousness. And then here, Let's read this one together. Let's read this one together. Let's read this one together. Maybe you can wake us up. One, two, read. And seek as far great things for thyself. Seek them not. For behold, I will bring evil upon all flesh, saith the Lord. I want uh, the first two sentences, just the first uh, two lines. And seekest thou great things for thyself, seek them not. And seekest thou is what you are seeking after great things, is what you are seeking after fame, is what you are seeking after riches and more riches. Is that what you are really seeking after? The Bible says, Seekest thou great things for yourself. Seekest thou great things for yourself. Seek them not. It says, Seek them not. They will happen. That's what the Bible says. Promotion does not come from the north, from the south, nor from the west. But promotion comes from whom? From God. So promotion will happen. But there are situations that lead to promotion. But when you begin to seek, when you are beginning to be a seeker of great things, the Bible says, seek them not. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I, I, I will show you why. I will show you why. Let us be careful. Seek as thou firm. Seek it not. Seek as thou great things, seek them not. Seek as thou the kingdom of God, yes, seek it. Seek as thou to be a righteous man, yes, seek it. Amen. Seek as thou to be a wise individual like Solomon, yes, seek it. Amen. Look at Solomon, look at Solomon. God is coming, the God of the universe. 
wisdom. We now know Solomon was the richest man in all the earth. In that wisdom. So there, there, there are, in the things of God, there are things to seek after. Yet there are things that follow you. And we must not confuse the two. There are things that are to be sought. There are things that are incidental to you being a child of God. That will happen without you seeking so much for them. May God be glorified. May God be glorified. Hallelujah. We will come to it later. But I believe this verse, this verse is a verse uh, that has really uh, uh, blessed me so much. It's a verse that has really blessed me so much. Uh, we, 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 we all want good things. We all desire good things. Desire is a good word because God says, I will give you the desire. But seeking or lasting after, lasting after is the danger. Is the danger that we are trying to correct in the house of God, among the people of God, lust for power, lust for control, lust for, uh, for material stuff, lust to have this, lust to control that, lust. With lust comes many sins. Many sins come from lust. Many wrong things come from lust. Lust for power. We have a situation, situations in Africa where someone is lusting for power in such a way that he's willing to kill at whatever cost so that he may hang on to that power. So lust is something that uh, uh, the work of God does not like, the king of kings does not like, and we have to deal with it today in the house of God. Amen. Hallelujah. There is desire, then there is lust. Lust is an uncontrolled want for something uh, that you currently do not have. Yet a desire is a, 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 a desire in line with the word of God according to the promises of God. So there is a difference between a desire and a lust. Let's come back. Let's come back uh, to Philippians, please. Chapter number, chapter number 